Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Prep Podcast. My name is Taylor Kaplan and I'm the host slash producer slash director of the series. And today we are back with episode eight. And this is Teens Are Back. So I surprised you all with a part two of our teen episode because it was so packed that we just had to extend it. And also season finale. So we wanted to have some fun. Well, today is just a continuation of the last episode. And we have a few teens talking in depth about their experience balancing school because that is a major, major obstacle when you're an actor and you're still going to school. We have some teens who went out of the country and had to still keep up with their school. We have students who go to performing arts high schools, lots of cool things. And today I'd like to thank Caitlin Shorey, Kenzie Richardson, Gracie Sunsian, Luke Napat, Adriana Camposano, Isabel Martins, John Martins, Sophia Torres, and Emma Brockman, all the amazing teens, such an amazing group of people, for joining us again for this episode. So without further ado, we are going to dive right in and get started. Luke, I know you were missing a lot, a lot of school, right? I, I missed like a month Oof, of okay. school. Was it like a month at a time or like a month in total? The total thing was a whole month. Oof, okay. Well, it, I, I went to LA for a month and a half, but I had like spring, like mid spring break or something. So I, so okay. like I only missed like a month of school. Okay. That's not so bad, but I mean, it's pretty bad. Pretty yeah. bad. Okay. How did you, I mean, you are a, you're a sophomore, right? I'm a sophomore. You're a sophomore, a little baby. Um, <laughs> how, how was that? Um, how did you balance that kind of like you were gone and working, you know, how did you balance keeping up with school and all that? Well, I'm lucky that I go to like a, a performing arts school. So they're like, mm. sure, we'll let you miss school. That so they were less a lot like, more lenient. Yeah, they were less sure. annoying about that, which was nice. Um, since I was in L.A., I, I did most of my schoolwork was done like self-studying. So I mostly like figured out what I was going to do. And I had to like email my teachers every day and I'm like send me to work or else I'm not going to be able to know what I'm doing when I get back there and sometimes they answer and sometimes they don't um, <laughs> they usually answer in a week so like it's a lot of like uh like Elsie said it's a lot of time management which is not my strong suit at all because <laughs> I procrastinate a lot um but it's a lot of like figuring out like okay today I'm going to do this subject and then I have rehearsal and then I'm going to come back and then we do this. And it's not always like super easy because some some stuff you need like people to teach you how to do. But since I was like o alone and I most of the work I did myself. So I like kind of taught myself geometry and I did the essays myself. That sounds really which awful. Was, <laughs> it was not easy, which is why it's so difficult. So it definitely is like a lot of responsibility, I think. And I'm, I'm it's also a lot of like support from your parents. Because if your parents help you, then it's like a lot of like a, it's a lighter load. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So I'm super lucky for that. Oh, yeah. Yay, Luke's parents. I have a question. Um, how is your experience going to LaGuardia High School? I, I'm not going to diss my school, but <laughs> LaGuardia is. Prep podcast is real. So, <laughs> so I'm not going to. I'm not also want. not going to lie. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but well. Usually public schools last to like what two thirty. Mm -hmm. We start at eight and we end at four ten, so it's a very very long day. What? Uh, well, for vocal majors, they only have so basically the layout is like you have your core academic classes, which is like math, English, science, history, uh, world languages, and then you have your lunch period, and then you have your extra like your drama block or your vocal block or your dance block, and in total a, a whole school day is 10 periods some people like vocal majors every year they only have like i think two or three vocal classes so they get to leave like a little earlier but drama majors currently we have like four <laughs> so i have a full day uh it's two periods of currently right now it's two periods of drama which is acting 
and we do stuff like scene work and improv. And then we have like single single classes for improv, theater history, theater movement, and then theater voice. And in junior year, they make us do musical theater, which is fun. And sometimes we get P credit for that, but like right now my school is being a little awkward and they're like, maybe we'll make you take more PE, which is a whole different story that I'm not gonna talk about. Um, <laughs> But it's a it's definitely a, a school that I felt like I fit in a lot more with. Like before I was was in lab middle school, which was like a super academically rigorous school. And uh, like, you know, not everyone loves musical theater. So when I went to LaGuardia, I felt like they were like my people. And it's also like really it's a sense of belonging because like you got your vocal majors who like every time you walk in the halls are screaming or belting something. And then the drama majors are always super like me <laughs> and then it's like wait so what i'm hearing is you it's victorious it's vi yeah <laughs> it's well look, Audrey, on a stole <laughs> my thunder <laughs> oh it's, my god yeah sure um well fame was also based off of laguardia so it's kind of like the fame school vibe and you really get like the experience but it's also like a normal high school at the same time which is really like funny but also interesting so Gracie, you also go to a performing arts school. Yeah. Do you want to yeah. talk about it? I do. I just had my juries, which are like our vocal tests. Um, like every every major has one. And so for vocal, you have to sing um, two songs um, in different languages. Mine this year was German. And I had to sing two songs in German, memorize, make sure your timing's correct. Um, you have to wear a certain attire. And it it's crazy because you don't have that much like i think you don't have as much time to learn it's about like three months to learn the different language and sing the songs and um last year i it was a little hard for me to memorize it because i had auditions around the same time as jury so i was stressed out about memorizing mm. both things but it's a it's a lot it was a lot different this year because i didn't have any auditions um around the time but i think that having like just talking about like performing arts school life it's definitely it can definitely get stressful and I I was a lot I was really stressed out for juries last year but I was more calmed down this year because of I feel like just some, the, some of the things I learned at the prep about just like my breathing technique I just I felt a lot more confident this year yeah <laughs> I love to hear that I just wanted to say like the reason that I recommend the prep if you're thinking about sending your teenager to the prep as someone who wasn't a teenager at the prep, it is just such a uplifting environment. Um, I work with Teresa mostly, but I know that the whole prep um, studio lives by this. It's very much, we don't traumatize our actors. We, we don't do put them down. Traumatize. And I've been through a lot of different acting training, and this is the first training where Teresa and I have worked to bring down my walls on like confidence and self-doubt because all these other schools that you go to they like to be like you're not good enough until you do the work and and yes you're not good enough until you do the work but like it's so supportive here that like I for the first time in my life feel confident you know and mm. that's why I just like recommend you start that as early as you can like don't don't bring an actor Get down. In. Bring them to the prep and like they'll bring them up. <laughs> put it on a t-shirt. Put, put it on a t-shirt. Put it on a t-shirt. <laughs> Elon, are you listening? <laughs> All right. We have another school balancer here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I just felt like saying that. Okay, John, do you want to talk about your experience? You have like a wild, wild, wild experience. Please talk about it. Yes, I have. Um, so I've been to Asia two times for acting, which is insane. What are the I never odds? thought <laughs> insane. I never thought I would go once, nonetheless <laughs> twice. Yeah. So um, it was actually one of my first shows. So I did Kinky Boots, the Chinese Broadway tour. So I was in China for three, four months. Wow. It was it was insane. I was super young i think it was nine or eight you were really little yeah it was the beginning beginning the you first baby, time i baby. Like, worked with Teresa. so i did that and i didn't really have to balance my schoolwork that much because so one month of it was during the school year and then three months was not it was in the summer so i got to tour china in the summer which is really fun and i don't have to worry about schoolwork but i had a tutor 
for I think both of my times in Asia that helped me work on my schoolwork, helped me time management. So that was really helpful. So so when I went to Asia for the second time, I went to South Korea, Ooh. which was a whole new experience. It was it was more city like. It was more New York City, but this was during COVID. It was the middle of COVID, and the restrictions were crazy. When I got off the plane, we had people that rushed us to a hotel, locked us in our hotel for two weeks. We couldn't leave. Ooh, strict there was quarantine. an alarm that sounded when we opened our door. So we were Yo. stuck in our room for two weeks. They brought us food, but it was cold and it was gross. So I did that for two weeks, You're stuck with my dad in the same room. <laughs> and then I kind of just did tutoring online with my tutor, who was also quarantining because she came to South Korea with me. So schoolwork... It was pretty easy. I think I was in fifth grade, so it wasn't like crazy work, but I just did did all my school work remotely. I go to a private school, so they sent me all my work and I could email my teachers if I needed them. They would send me all my tests. So I say like balancing school for me was pretty easy, but it's definitely different. Yeah, very different. That's very cool, though. So to wrap up the episode, I just wanted to talk about Caitlin's journey, and she is actually an advocate for a wonderful, wonderful, super important organization called Inheritance of Hope. Do you want to talk a little bit about it, Caitlin? Yeah, sure. So um, Inheritance of Hope um, has legacy retreats for families that have a parent with a terminal illness, and they take them on uh, like a few days of a trip to, for my family when I went, um, we went to uh, Universal and SeaWorld, and um, it was such a wonderful experience. And they pay for everything. Like, they cover anything that you could think of. Wow. And the people there are so nice. You get um, – there's – they do it by age groups. They have, like, counseling groups. And so, for me, I was seven, so I was re- really young. But we did, like, activities to help, like, cope with the illness and that kind of stuff and, like, um, how to deal with our emotions and um, we also had volunteers. Like every family had like a set of two volunteers, um, and they like took us around to the parks and stuff. And they were so awesome. Um, like they were there at the um, at the airport whenever we got there. They had signs for oh, us. That's it was so, so cute. sweet. <laughs> um, oh my gosh! But overall, it was just like such a nice experience, and the people there are so nice. And, like, literally when I say they cover everything, I mean they cover everything. Like, there was not a single thing that my family had to worry about. And it was really nice. And it was just a time to, like, make memories. And That's amazing. And, like, really get to, like, have that time with each other. Wow. Are there any ways, how can we give to Inheritance of Hope? Um, so, I, um, there's websites and stuff. You can donate money to Inheritance of Hope. That helps them bring these families on a retreat. So, if you want to help you can just search up Inheritance of Hope and there's many different ways that you can help donate. We will actually link it in the description. So if you want to check out what they do and if you can donate, that would be amazing. And thank you for sharing that, Caitlin. Yeah, of course. All right. Well, on that note, we are going to wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the season finale. This was totally a really, really fun one. I actually enjoy this episode so much because you guys are my favorite people. And I love you all. And I'm making very intense eye contact with you all (laughs) right now. And yeah, I think this is really important for teens like us and who are in the industry to watch and or to listen to rather and just kind of figure out like you know there it's a tough time but there's ways to go around it and the most important thing to do right now is technique everybody get your technique in times where there's no auditions or we're just kind of chilling hanging around you know we feel kind of like we got that motivation taken out of us or we just kind of feel like you know what do we do now it's a really tough time but keep training keep working hard um having a support system is awesome and i'm so thankful for you guys and i love you all so much and thank you guys you listeners for tuning in i hope you all really enjoyed our first season i know i enjoyed working on it and interviewing all of these really super cool people such as the ones we have today but i would really love to hear your guys's feedback on the podcast and the series as a whole so if there's anything specific you really want to hear or you have any questions on a topic or you'd love to hear from one specific person please reach out you can dm us on instagram our instagram is just prep podcast 
Or you can reach out to me. My Instagram is Taylor Nicole Kaplan. And I would love to just know what you guys really want to hear. So definitely take advantage of that. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. To be continued. <laughs>